Good evening, this is Silver Shot. Metro coming to you live from YouTube channels. I continue on my part series of the week that was college football season review. The next 67 college football season. This is uh, week 11. The games are played on November 23rd to November 25th, 1967. Let's get into it. There were three games that was played on Thanksgiving. We're going to start with Oklahoma beating Nebraska. Um, Oklahoma was number five in the country. They won 21 to 14, Oklahoma. Oklahoma had been absent from Big A throne room for five years and soon as earned the 1967 conference crown with his clutch touchdown in the fourth quarter and late game interception at own three three yard line. Opening kickoff fumble allowed Sooners kicker Mike Bacon to boot first of his two field goals, trailing 13 0 in the second quarter. Nebraska scored both its touchdowns. Quarterback Frank Patrick, who launched school record 40 passes for 290 yards, carried for one yard touchdown through nine yard touchdown pass to wide wing back Ben Gregory. So Huskers led 14 13 until Oklahoma wing back Eddie Hinton tallied winning touchdown early in the fourth quarter until tight end Steve Zabel caught two point pass. Texas AM beat Texas 10 7 with six win in a row. Aggies clinched their first Southwest Conference crown since 1956 and first Cotton Bowl berth since 1942. Texas a and dominated first half, but had only kicker Charlie Riggs' 32-yard field goal to show for it. Texas created 56-yard touchdown march in the fourth quarter on quarterback Bill Bradley's passing and tailback Ted Coy's running. Bradley cashed it with two-yard run for 7-3 lead. Aggies clutch quarterback Ed Hargett quickly launched long pass to wing wide receiver Bob Long who beat defensive back Ronnie Aaron. Catching ball at long 36-yard line, long drag defensive back Pat Harkins into the end zone to complete thrilling 80-yard play. Last year's threat ended on Texas A&M. Linebacker busted Ad Adamese interception at its 15-yard line. On the same uh, now, now there were two games, beg your pardon, that was played on Thanksgiving. Sorry about that. If I said that, there were two games that were played on Thanksgiving. Oklahoma, Nebraska, and Texas A&M, Texas A&M, and Texas. Now, the day after Thanksgiving, the 24th of November, November uh, 24th of 1987, that was played on Friday, November 24th. That was Miami versus Notre Dame, and Notre Dame beat Miami by score of 24-22. Notre Dame was ranked number six. Record crowd at Orange Bowl Stadium was delighted to see Notre Dame stymied by muscular Miami defense in first half. In building 16-10 halftime lead, Kane's got key contributions from defensive back Jimmy Dodd's 49-yard punt return, defensive lineman Jim Kressel's hard hit, that created kickoff fumble quarterback Dave Olivo's pair of touchdowns on pass and run. Fighting Irish rushing attack began to click in third quarter as fullback Jeff Zimmerman ripped off good games that led to his touchdown and 17-16 lead. Now, Notre Dame defensive back Jim Herjings intercepted set up halfback Bob Gliderio's 10-yard touchdown run in the fourth quarter. Doubt remained until Herjings fell on a two-point conversion pass. Tying two point pass with three minutes to play. Next, Harvard played against Yale, where Yale beat Harvard 24 to 20. Clemson beat South Carolina 23 12. Tennessee, the number two team in the country, beat Kentucky 17 to 7. While its vaunted offense was kept in check by spirited Kentucky. Two volunteers used this ball hawking secondary to gain five interceptions, two of which led to short scoring drives and 10 points. Because of linebacker Steve Connor's interception, volunteers required only 18 yards to move to opening seven at the lead on eight yard touchdown pass from quarterback Dewey Warren to wide wing back Bill Baker. Warren threw his second touchdown pass at the end of 68-yard drive later in the first quarter as sprint champion wide receiver. Richmond Flowers had 
held screen pass for 29 yard touchdown behind ringing block of tackle John Boynton. Wildcats cinched up their defense led by defensive tackle Dick Farmer in the second quarter. A dominated play by committing no first downs until deep into the third quarter. But Kentucky drives were brought to abrupt stops. A loss on downs on the Tennessee 32 34-yard line. Until halfback Dickie Lyons had 165 yards on 29 carries and a touchdown. Walk away for 68 yard dash to three yard line and follow the touchdown run. Kicker Carl Crimpser made three yard field goal in the fourth quarter with another interception of Cats quarterback Dave Bear by Tennessee safety Mike Jones set up a short field goal at Kick Kentucky 27 yard line. Earlier Jones lit out on 71 yard interception the turn before being caught by Lions at Kentucky 19 yard line. It is sure is a long field they have up there, said Jones. The goal line kept getting farther away. Florida State beat had Florida State beat Florida by score of 21 to 16. In fact, Larry Green provided a surprise early spark for Florida State, which I get a bold berth. Down three nothing pinned at on four yard line by Florida quarterback punter Harmon wages punt Seminoles sprung green for 17 four and 22 yards runs um, 10 yard catch that gave quarterback Kim Hammond room to dish nine yard touchdown pass to halfback Bill Mormon Gators fumble two minutes later set stage for green runs that led to 14 three time lead Florida now it to 14 nine on tailback Bob Christian's short touchdown and third quarter, but lost fumble at FSU's seven-yard line in the fourth quarter. Hammond returned from injury to pitch 51, 38-yard pass to end. Ronsell's second win for clinching touchdown, 21-9 lead. Ohio State beat Michigan 24-14. Indiana upset number three, Purdue, by score of 19-14, Indiana completed storybook Rise to Riches season with stunning upset of number 3 Purdue to earn three-way share of Big Ten title and trip to Rose Bowl. Minnesota joined Indiana and put Purdue atop conference with 21-14 win over Wisconsin. Who's a senior fullback? Terry Cole uh, was shadowed much of the year by his sophomore backfield mates. Charged 42 yards to set up wide receiver Jay Butcher's seven-yard touchdown. Catch and roared 63 yards in the second quarter to provide 19-7 lead. Fullback Perry Williams scored his second touchdown for Boilermakers and halfback Leroy Keys made 20 carries for 114 yards rushing before being injured in the fourth quarter. But Purdue couldn't overcome four fumbles, especially Pittsburgh Bobble, was lost in Indiana one yard line. Sparky, who's his defense with linebacker Ken Kazmarat, defensive back Dave Cornerwa. And linebacker Brown Marks. Syracuse beat number four UCLA 32 to 14. Senior quarterback led his team to the Cypress victory in his last game. It was shocking that quarterback Rick Casada of Syracuse played the role of hero instead of UCLA's All American quarterback Gary Beaver. Casada had a hand in four touchdowns, passing left 15, 146 yards, touchdowns, two touchdowns, interception. Rushing 19 times, 119 yards, and two touchdowns. They had 13 nothing. Orange men knocked out listless Bruins, and Beeben early in the third quarter. Defensive lineman Dave Casme flattened Beeben for 20 yard loss. Aggravated quarterback's rib injury and created fumble recovery at Bruins 17 yard line. But soon, the 19, soon down 19 to nothing. You say summoned sub quarterback Bill Bowden to mop up. And Bowden pitched 92 yard touchdown to end Ron Copeland. And Tom Coughlin, the future Boston College NFL coach, caught fourth quarter three yard touchdown pass, made exciting by 
decided to retreat on 20 yards behind scrimmage line. It's like a cool look at week 11, the games I played on November 23rd to November 25th, 1967. Week 11, let's get a look at that final AP poll as November 27th. Uh, Southern California was number one. Number two was Tennessee. Number three, Oklahoma. Number four, Indiana. Number five, Notre Dame. Number six, Wyoming. Number seven, Oregon State. Number eight, Alabama. Number nine, Purdue. And number 10, Penn State. So I'm going to continue to move forward into, I'm going to try to go into week number 12 and 13. Try to close it out. So we're going to continue on with December 2nd, the week that was, 1967. Uh, Navy beat Army 19-14. Tennessee, number two team in the country, beat Vanderbilt uh, 41-14. And the Tennessee being number two, they won their first SEC crown since 1956. Nailed down Orange Bowl bid. And last but not least, Southern Methodist beat Texas Christian by a score of 26 to 14. And then on December 9th, December 9th, you had uh, the, long, the long game that stood out was Miami beating Florida 20-13 as linebacker Ken Corbin ran back in the session for 80 and 45-yard touchdowns as Hurricanes defense fulfilled his pledge to get to Gabe's quarterback Larry Rents, former Miami high school hero, had enjoyed a perfect 17-0 record in his games at the Orange Bowl Stadium. Miami went up 20 to nothing on third quarter as defensive back Jimmy Dye Race 79. 79 yards with punt return to set up halfback Vince Apolsky's two yard touchdown run. Quarterback Harmon wages to leave Rince late in the third quarter and pitch fourth quarter touchdown to wide receiver guy McDinney. And halfback Larry Smith added late window dressing touchdown for the Gators. So that concludes a look at the uh, regular season of 1967. We've got the conference standings. You had the Ivy League. Yale was number one, 7-0. West Virginia was 4-0-1. The Big Ten was a three-way tie between Indiana, Purdue, and Minnesota with a 6-1 record in the conference. The Big Eight Conference had 7-0. Oklahoma, Wyoming was 5-0. Oklahoma Atlantic Coast Conference was won by Clemson, 6-0. Tennessee won the Southeastern Conference. 6-0. Uh, Mid-American Toledo was 5-1. Southwest Conference was Texas A&M, 6-1. AAW was won by Southern California, 6-1. So while I'm at, I'm going to go over the major bowl games. Also, try to conclude this whole um, season. Right? Might as well do it if I have a chance. So let's get into it. Liberty Bowl, December 16th. Here's the major bowl games next to 7. Liberty Bowl on December 16th, North Carolina State beat Georgia 14-7 in its, in winning its first ever bowl game. North Carolina State survived two four-quarter stories by Georgia by to within shadow of Wolfpack goalposts, although the Bulldogs finished 276 yards to 27 yards offensive advantage. Their early game attack added up only to two missed field goals. It took Wolfpack quarterback Jim Dye's second quarter touchdown pass to spur Georgia, which responded immediately with the tailback Kent Lawrence's 42 yard kickoff return. Bulldogs fullback Ronnie Jenkins soon tied it in a 7 7. NC State earned winning touchdown early in the fourth quarter when halfback Tony Barcha polished 73 yard drive with touchdown plunge. NC State defensive back Del Morrow stopped fourth down play and on one yard line, thus for strain. 98 yard Bulldogs march. Shortly, Georgia special teamer Gary Adams blocked punt, but quarterback Kirby Moore missed four straight passes from Wolfpack nine yard line, last of which was dropped in the end zone. Next, the Blue Bonnet Bowl, December 23rd. Colorado beat Miami 31 21. How about bad ankle? Colorado quarterback Bob Anderson watched defensive back brother Dick play superbly in the Buffalo's secondary. Miami built 14 10. 
lead primarily on 77 yard interception touchdown return by good defensive back Jimmy Dye, who broke played with broken jaw. Coming back, Anderson was summoned from bench in the last minute of first half and sparked Bison attack with two and 38 yard touchdown runs in the second half. Hurricanes went to bullpen too, inserting sub quarterback Bill Miller provided brief 21 17 lead in the fourth quarter when he pitched nine yard touchdown to end Jerry Dannon. Dannon. And Anderson put Colorado head for good with his long touchdown run. Next, there was a tie between Florida State and Penn State, 17 17, and a Gator Bowl, December 30th, where Penn State coach Joe Paterno, Paterno created versatile defensive alignment to combat Florida State air game using occasional fifth defense back. It worked magically a 10 mid Penn State's unusual gamble on offense backfire. So Lions led 17 0 on quarterback kicker Tom Sherman's field goal, his tail touchdown pass to end Jack Curry, the tail end turn wing back Ted Qualic. Seminole was fashion in effective drive early in the third quarter, but was stopped on downs at Lions 6 yard line when Penn State faced a fourth down and one at the 15 yard line. Paterno decided to go for it, but fell. So FSU overcame. Penalty rushed through 20 yard touchdown pass to wide receiver Ron Sellers from quarterback Kim Hammond. By 362 yards passing on 37 to 53 passing. Halfback Charlie Pittman lost fumble on following kickoff, and Hammond Sneak made it 17 14 only four plays later. Starting from own 32 yard line with 130 left, Everett Shoot tied it on kicker Grant Guthrie's 25 yard field goal with 15 seconds left. In the Sun Bowl on December 30th, Texas El Paso beat Mississippi 14 to 7. Little known Texas El Paso made rare bowl headlines just 16 months after the basketball team won its only NCAA championship. Ole Miss defense sparkled, sparkled in the first half as defensive linemen Dan Sarton and Mac McClure made big plays in holding UTEP to 15 yard rushing. And Minute Miners quarterback Billy Stevens to 3 for 9 for 26 yard passing. So, key play in this game was McCoy's second quarter 47 yard interception return over overthrown flat pass. Rebels quarterback Bruce Newell sneaked for a 7 0 lead and two plays later. Stevens got hot early in the fourth quarter and completing 6 7, 6 7 for 75 yards on a 75 yard march. UTEP linebacker Fred Carr jarred the ball loose for Mississippi halfback Bo Bowen. At Rebels' 22-yard line, halfback Larry McHenry lugged ball on four straight run runs for Miders' winning touchdown. Next, Cotton Bowl, Texas A&M beat Alabama 20-16. Classic matchup of student teacher went to coach Coach Gene Stones of Texas A&M, one-time player and assistant coach under Bear Bryant. The Aggies' victory formula converting turnovers into touchdowns was precisely what Bryant had preached in his 23 years as coach at Maryland, Kentucky, Texas A&M, and Alabama. Princeton Tide had open scoring with first of quarterback Ken Stables, two touchdown runs. A&M quarterback Ed Hargett tied it at 7-7 at 13-yard touchdown fast. To Harry, halfback Larry Stegen. Halfback Wendell, Wendell Hoxley sealed ties fate with 20-yard touchdown sprint for 20-10 Texas A&M advantage in the third quarter. And Bryant cited missed two point run of the Stables and Sony touchdown run as it could have changed the game as Bama moved to within 20 to 16 in the third quarter. As the clock wound down to end, Bryant crossed field to greet Stallings and Bear hugged his friend off the ground in an admiration. Dramatic Texas A&M Aggies joined football's all time in season comeback artists sweeping their last seven games after the opening of the season open four. In the Sugar Bowl, Louisiana State defeated. Wyoming 20 to 13. Wyoming appeared on way to his first major bowl win as it rolled up 13 0 halftime lead on muddy field in New Orleans. Balanced Cowboys attack employed halfback Jim Killick kick and fullback Tom Williams on ground and quarterback Paul Scano in air. Outstanding kicker Jerry DePoister booted two field goals, including two date Sugar Bowl record 49 yard field goal. Wyoming looked for kill when it faced three third and and one decision third quarter. Coach Lloyd Eaton called for an unsuccessful pass and tied turned toward deeper squad of LSU. Off bench came Tiger sophomore halfback Glenn Smith to capture MVP honors with 17 carries for 74 yards rushing and point 39 yard reception. 
Smith scored a touchdown at end of 80 yard drive late in the third quarter, then sparked two touchdown marches in the fourth quarter. Other shoot quarterback Nelson Stokely threw two touchdown passes to end Tommy Morrell, second of which came with 422 left, ending Wyoming's 14 game winning streak. And the Rose Bowl, Southern California beat Indiana 14 3. In front of the largest to date Rose Bowl crowd, national champion Southern California sprung tail back OJ Simpson on underdog Indiana with expected results. Taking playoff game award, OJ Simpson rushed for 25 carries, 128 yards, and two touchdowns, earned plaudits from losing coach John Pont as the player who made USC Nation's clear cut best team. Yet, stunting and blitzing Hoosiers had their moments on defense because their game tackling limited. Simpson's longest run to 15 yards. USC created 84 yard touchdowns march to Simpson's touchdown, touchdown run in the first quarter that future quarterback Steve Soggs three completions for 42 yards. Trojans fullback Don Dan Scott lost fumble into Indiana end zone while trying to close cross goal line, but it spoiled another chance for men of Troy. In this break, he charged overmatched Hoosiers in second quarter. Indiana used quarterback Harry Gonzalez. 26 yard punt return and his 15 yard pass to wide receiver Jay Butcher to position kicker Dave Cornoa for a 27 yard field goal. USC led 7 3 at halftime. Simpson key 45 yard drive in third quarter, scoring behind blocks of tackle Ron Yeri and guard Dennis Bourne. Indiana got going in fourth quarter with 53 50 yard marches, but Gonzo got banged up, had to depart briefly. Loses its initial drive of fourth quarter was derailed. Trojans strong defense stopped second Indiana advance at USC 28 yard line. Orange Bowl Oklahoma beat Tennessee 26 24. Storm and Sooners dominated first half to tune of 19 to nothing as nation's top great defense. Recovered fumble and made interception to create a uh, touchdown. So lean quarterback. Bobby Warmack accounted for 188 yards of offense in the first half, making seven yard touchdown run and 20 yard touchdown pass to wing back Eddie Hitton. Warmack suffered in the two interceptions in the second half, first resulting in a linebacker Jimmy Glover's 36 yard touchdown return, while a second set up another volunteer's touchdown by sailback Charles, Charles Footman kicker Carl Crimson's 26 yard field goal brought Tennessee to within 19 to 17 in the fourth quarter. So volunteers quarterback Dewey Warren, who helped spark rally soon, tossed ill-fated flat pass. Oklahoma defensive back Bob Stevenson stepped in front of it, dashed 25 yards to score, killing touchdown for 26-17 lead. But it wasn't over. Warren narrowed it to 26-24 with late sneak with just less than two minutes to play. Oklahoma coach Chuck Fairbanks explicitly called for fourth down and one run. By tailback Steve Owens from own 43 yard line. Linebacker Jack Reynolds hammered Owens in backfield. The volunteers earned their for last chance. Kicker Crimson was wide right with the 43 yard field goal try with seven seconds showing on the clock. So, includes a look at the whole season as a whole. For 1967, let's get the top performance formula. 1967 was Southern California. They was number one. 1967 top opponent. Records was number one at Florida State. They was number one as far as like the top opponent record. 1967 out of conference record. The best record was uh, the Big Eight Conference. 16-9-1 with a percentage of 6-34-6. and six, Two and on the bowl season. The, the individual statistical leaders in 1967. You're going to look at the rushing yards. First and foremost, it was O.J. Simpson. Led the nation in attempts. 266 yards, 266 attempts for 1,415 yards, averaging 5.3 yards a carry. So he was the number one rusher for, for his you know, attempts and uh, his yards. Passing yards, Sal Olivas, New Mexico State was number one, 156 completions, 321 attempts for 2,225 yards. 48.6% completion. Receiving yards, Ron Sellers was number one. 
seven catches for 1,228 yards. And here's the consensus All-American team from 1967 at the ends on offense at the ends. Dennis Holman, Alabama. Ron Sellers, Florida State. Tackles, Edgar Chandler, Georgia. Ron Yeri, Southern California. Guard, Harry Ozuski, Clemson. Rich Stoddard, Houston. The center position was Bob Johnson, Tennessee. The backfield was Gary Beeman of UCLA, D. Ward Keys of Purdue, O.J. Simpson of Southern California, and Larry Zonk of Syracuse. The defense for the All-American team defense, you had ends like Ted Hendricks at Miami, Tim Vrasevich from Southern California, tackle Dennis Berg, North Carolina State, guard Granville, Lincolns, Oklahoma, Wayne Malin, Nebraska, uh, linebackers, Adrian Young, Southern California, and Don Manning of UCLA. In the backfield, defensive backfield, was Frank Laurie of Virginia Tech, Tom Scowen, Notre Dame, Bobby Johns, Alabama, and Dick Anderson, Colorado. So here's the uh, 1967 Heisman Trophy vote. The Heisman Trophy winner for 1967 was Gary Beban. The senior quarterback of UCLA had 1,968 votes. Second, Finishing in the Heisman Trophy vote was O.J. Simpson, who was second. Junior tailback, Southern California, 1,722 votes. Third, finish third, finishing third was Leroy Keyes. Junior halfback of Purdue, 1,366 votes. Larry Zonska finished fourth with senior fullbacks from Syracuse, finished with 136 votes. Kim Hammett, senior quarterback, Florida State, finished with 90 votes. Other major awards that were won in 1967, college football season. Maxwell Player of the Year Award with the Gary Beeman. O.J. Simpson won the Walter Camp for Best Back Award. Outland, Lightman, Outland, Outland Lyman Trophy Award, and as well as Newt Rockney Lyman Trophy Award, went to Ron Yeri, senior tackle for Southern California. And the AFCA Coach of the Year was John Hunt. So that concludes a look at the whole season of college football. For the games that were played during uh, the 1967 season. That's it. I'm done. I ain't finished. So um, I'm done with the 1967 college football season. It's over with the regular season. Everything is over. And uh, it's time to move forward to 1968. I'll be talking about that tomorrow. As I continue on my part series of the week that was college football history review. 1967 season is over with. So please like and subscribe to the channel. Comment. We appreciate it. I do a video of this magnitude tomorrow. I'll be talking about the overview of the 1968 college football season. The overview of that season. As well as week one that took place in 1968 college football season. Please like and subscribe and comment on the channel. This is Rashad Mitchell. Until then, talk to you soon.